Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, hopefully everyone of you will be well. Uh, beta, my topic today is about thyroid gland. Uh, last time in the last lecture we discussed about the anatomy and the physiology of the thyroid gland. So today we are going to start about the important diseases uh, uh, both uh, in, the, in the thyroid gland and also in the parathyroid gland. But today we are going to start with the thyroid gland. Uh, like I said last time, uh, what we are going to discuss today is about uh, we are going to start with the thyroglossus cyst and fistula. And uh, now coming to thyroglossus cyst, uh, basically as I told you in the, my last lecture that the thyroid gland arises from the thyroglossal duct and uh, which arises from the foramen cecum. And uh, as I told you that the foramen cecum is at the junction of anterior two thirds and posterior one third of the tongue. So there, there is a thyroglossal duct, and uh, uh, it bas basically disappears when a person is born after the birth. But if the tract persists, and if it not disappear, if it's not being, uh, uh, if it still persists, so it can result in a sinus fistula or a cyst. Uh, now, how you differentiate between a cyst, a sinus, and a fistula? A cyst is a closed cavity, closed uh, cavity, uh, or uh, with epithelial-like surfaces having fluid. It's a closed entity, and a fistula is abnormal communication between two epithelial-like surfaces. And a sinus is a cavity epithelial line with a single opening so if it's totally closed with the epithelial lining it's a cyst if it's an abnormal communication between two epithelial line surfaces it's a fistula and if it's a cavity with single opening with the epithelial lining that's called a cyst now thyroglossal cyst is basically the persistence of thyroglossal dye which should uh, in all the cases, non normal cases should disappear at the time of birth, but if it persists, so it can result in formation of a cyst in front of the neck. So, uh, as you can see in the diagram here, uh, that this is the uh, foramen cecum here, and there it descends down in front of the hide bone and in front of the thyrocartilage. So, the position where you can find a cyst. It's, it could be superior to the hide bone here. It could be uh, just in front of the hide bone. It could be inferior of the hide bone uh, in front of the thyrocartilage. Now, why I am emphasizing on the hide bone? Because later when we are going to discuss about the operation of or the removal of the cyst, we are all, there would be a portion of the hide bone which we are going to take along with the uh, the cyst that we are going to discuss. So. Uh, for you guys, so what uh, the important points are that why it happens is the persistent of thyroglossal tract. Uh, what important other structure is the foramen cecum because thyroglossal uh, tract descend from foramen cecum is an MCQ question which you can get in your MCQs. And where is foramen cecum? It is at the junction of anterior two third with the posterior one third of the tongue. This is another MCQ question. It can result in three things. Either it could be sinus. Sinus is a closed cavity with epithelial lining with a single opening. Is a, if a fistula, this is abnormal communication between two epithelial egg surfaces like tracheoesophageal fistula. It's a communication between trachea and esophagus. Vasicovaginal fistula is a communication with vagina and uh, uh, urinary bladder and enterocutaneous fistula. It's a communication between skin and the GI tract, any portion of the gut. And this is, I have told you, it's a closed cavity with fluid with epithelial lining. How the fistula is formed? So in this case, the fistula would be between uh, the foramen cecum and the skin. If it erupts on the skin, so there would be two epithelial lining. One would be of the foramen cecum, the of the thyroglossal duct and other would be of the skin so abnormal communication between two epithelial lining surfaces mm -hmm. or cavities is thyroglossal fistula 
Uh, now, the clinical features of thyroglossus is usually it's found in the subhoid portion of the tract. Like I told you, this is the subhoid, subhoid between the hyoid. Usually, you find it in in the subhoid portion, like here. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. 75% present in the midline swelling. As you can see, it's in the midline. A reminder can be found the later aspect of the head bone. As in the previous diagram, I have told you that it could be superior in front or inferior to the head bone. So in 75% cases, it is a midline swelling. The stress elevates on the protrusion of the tongue. Basically, this is a test to differentiate between a thyroglossus cyst from rest of the swellings of the neck. Uh, the classical signs, if someone asks you in your exam that how you differentiate between a thyroglossal cyst and uh, another neck swelling like a third gland or uh, any some mental lymph nodes, so you are going to say that we are going to perform the tongue protrusion test. Now how you tongue, uh, do the tongue protrusion test? Ask the patient to open the mouth and protrude the tongue and you have to look on the movement of the swelling. If it moves with this uh, tongue protrusion, that is a thyroglossal cyst. Why it moves with the tongue protrusion? Since it is attached with the foramen cecum, which is a part of the posterior part of the tongue. So when you protrude the tongue, so it moves forward outwards and the thyroglossal cyst is being lifted up. So the main classical clinical sign of thyroglossal cyst is tongue protrusion test. Uh, the, what are the complications? There was a question two years back in your exam that uh, how you uh, uh, how you identify thyroglossal cyst, what are the clinical features and what complications you get. So in the complication it can get infected because of the lymphoid tissue in it. It can uh, return into a thyroglossal fistula or it can cause in a very minor cases it can cause some compression symptom if it gets infected and get enlarged to cause the compression. Uh, now coming to the treatment, we can aspirate it, we can inject uh, a, a steroid injection in it, but there's a high rate of uh, recurrence in it. Once we do aspiration, it can reoccur. So what's the proper treatment is the cyst trunk operation. The name is the cyst trunk operation and what we do uh, we give an NCN, a transfer NCN in the neck, always a skin clean NCN. Then we raise the platysma flap, do the dissection of this uh, cyst and how we do it that we hold it and then we have to take it all the way down to the foramen cecum including one third of the hyoid bone. So till the foramen cecum, uh, if we don't do it, so if, we, if any part of the a thyroglossal cyst or duct remains so there is a highly probability of getting it recurrence and turning it into a fistula so mainly you have to do the dissection raise the both the platysma flap and then eventually you have to dissect it till the foramen cecum so that you can get it completely removed this procedure is called cyst trunk procedure they can ask you about the complications of this procedure so you can and narrate that in this procedure we can do the besides the anesthesia complication we can uh, the we divide it into paraoperative and postoperative complication paraoperative complication is damage to the nearby structures like damage to the trachea thyroid gland and uh, while uh, dissecting to the hyoid bone we can uh, do the damage to the tongue and also the hypoglossal nerve and hypoglossal muscles and post-operative complication as I always broadly classified them in uh, immediate post-operative and late post-operative completion which I've already told you. So this was about thyroglossal cyst. If there is a small opening here and uh, uh, then uh, I can show you in the next diagram. So this is the thyroglossal fistula as you can see here that there is a discharging sinus uh, at the base of the cyst here. So how this happened that the cyst erupted on the skin. So this is a fistula which extends directly from here till foramen cecum. Now if this dye you get uh, in your ospi, we do give this diagram in the ospi. So sometimes the people write it that this is a diagram of, uh, this is a silogram. So uh, let me create this, not a silogram. If you can see that this is a thyroglossal cyst which is extending into 
the foramen cecum. So don't confuse this diagram or this uh, radiograph with the silogram. It looks a bit similar, but it differs. So we do uh, give this uh, in your OSPs. So this is a fistulogram. And now what is fistulography? Fistulography is giving a dye in one of the opening and then taking uh, a radiological image of that. Uh, to see the extent, so we have given a radio opaque dye. You can see the opening through uh, 10 cc uh, syringe, and there you can see the cyst and the track is going up to the foramen cecum. So this is the uh, this is how we are going to uh, detect the uh, uh, thyroglossal track. So this was the other picture. In which we can say so this is one of the picture I have shown that the infected um, thyroglossal cells you can see the midline swelling but this is red and uh, it means that it has got infection in it next one again in the midline swelling thyroglossal cells this is another picture of the thyroglossus, a big thyroglossus in which I was saying that it can cause compression symptoms and uh, you can see uh, this is the midline swelling which has enlarged probably. So this is another example of an infective thyroid glossal cyst. So this was a non-infected thyroid glossal cyst and this is an infected thyroid glossal cyst. This is the anatomical structure in which we can say that how the hide bone is involved and it's at what portion we get this thyroid glossal cyst. Uh, now coming uh, to the end of my lecture about the thyroid glossal cyst. Uh, now what questions you can get in your exam? Uh, as a third year BDS student, uh, the, as I have reviewed the last previous papers, so there were questions in OSPs, and uh, like there was a question like this, we can uh, I have seen in the OSPI case that they have asked that what is the this fistula tract, and how uh, you are going to investigate in this patient, and what is the treatment and name of the operation. So this fistula tract is a basically thyroglossal fistula. How we are going to investigate by fistulography and what is the procedure is the cyst trunk procedure. So this was a brief uh, answer that we are going to go uh, to give in the OSPI. I do, we do get a question in the exam almost in 2016 I think and there was a question that a uh, 5 year old uh, child presented with a midline neck swelling which protrudes with the tongue. Uh, which protrudes from the trunk for two years, which elevates with the trunk for two years. It is non tender, soft in consistency. So, what was the likely do the diagnosis? The so answer should be thyroglossal cyst. What is the embryological significance or what is the uh, embryological uh, derivation of this thing? So, you are going to say this is the persistence of the thyroglossal tract. And what complications occur in this cyst? So, you can say that it can get infected, it can turn into a thyroglossal fistula. And the fourth part was what is the treatment option So you are going to say that we can go for aspiration but in aspiration there are chances of recurrence. So the complete is the taking out the cyst up to the foramen cecum and uh, then uh, this operation is called cyst trunk operation. So we do uh, do get questions in the exam about thyroglossus. You must have a clear idea about its position, its embryological, uh, uh, embryological history and uh, also the complication and about the cyst trunk procedures, the significance of hide bone, the positions where the thyroglossal cyst can be found, and uh, uh, also about the complication of the surgeries. So because uh, now in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the thyroid gland. Uh, so we'll take a short break now, and when then I'll be coming back after a short break of two, three minutes, so then we are going to start with the thyroid gland.